Hi everyone. So today I plan to film a trash to treasure video. I haven't filmed one like that in a while, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, in case you're new here, my name's Mary and I love to share the many projects I have going on around here with you all. The items that I'll be working on today are actually trash. Like often when I film a trash to treasure video, there's items that I picked up maybe in thrift stores or garage sales, not necessarily you know deemed as trash, but today I can literally say I'm dealing with trash because these items were given to me by people that were literally gonna throw them out. So I rescued them and I'm kind of excited to give them a new life, you could say. The first item I have here is this large wrought iron wall decoration. Um, it's pretty in itself, like it would look nice above a doorway maybe or hanging above a large sign, uh, but it's fairly large and what I have in mind to do with it is take it apart and use it for something else. At this point, I'm not sure will it even turn out, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Next up here is an old clock that doesn't work anymore. This was given to me by a friend that she actually redid the outside part. Like this used to be dark, like a dark brown. I know that because I used to have a clock exactly like this, but she did a wonderful job in doing like a paint and glaze method. So I'll probably leave that, but I do have plans for the center. Again, not sure will it turn out, but gonna try. And the last item here, my mom picked up this winter in Florida. She found it among somebody's trash. I think it was trash day in a neighborhood. And I think it's the cutest little stand. I of course thought plant stand when I saw it. And as you can see, it needs a top, but I really like the design along the ends here or the skirting. I thought it was really cute. So we'll see what we can do with it. So join me for these fun projects and enjoy. In the past, our clock exactly like this ended up giving out. After having it for you know 15 years or so, it did last a long, a good long time. But uh, what I did with mine was I painted the whole thing white and turned it into a sign, like the middle part where the glass is or the fiberglass. I actually painted that too and just turned it into like a farmhouse type uh, sign. And I'll try to dig out an old picture of it and throw it on here in case you're looking for an idea like that. And I thought about doing the same thing again with this one, but it's always fun to do something different. So here I am taking it apart, trying to see if I can get into the actual clock part. So as you can see in here, there's some more screws, uh, really tiny ones. I'll have to see if I can find a screwdriver that will fit. So this clock is proving to be a challenge to take apart. I thought I could just snap this outer rim off, but it's not working. I never knew it would be so hard to get inside a clock. So my goal here is to get underneath the glass. I actually wanna create a flower shadow box of sorts. Again, not even sure is it gonna look right. Hopefully it will for the bother that I'm going through. But again, didn't know clocks were put so well together. Uh, there seems to be not even a seam, you know, to take it apart. I even tried using a knife and a hammer, kind of chiseling away on the frame part. I thought there was one area where it looked like a seam and that did not work. It still didn't get me inside the clock. So I guess my last resort here is to just cut open the back uh, to get inside. I'm sure it won't look pretty. There's really no nice way of doing this, but I have a tool here that might work. The tool I'm using is Milwaukee's cordless multi-tool is what it's called and it has this handy blade where uh, you can just kind of cut cut into anything like make a straight line as you you know cut in I wanted to paint the inside part of this possible shadow box, so here I'm just using a gift wrap, cutting out a circle to protect my glass from getting paint on it, uh, taping it into place. I'm using the Stolium spray paint, white.
This room is possibly one of the most drab and dirty places in our house. I'm almost embarrassed to show you, but this is what we call the furnace room. It's where our furnace is, and then also the guys have like a hunting corner back here. And Pebbles actually often is down here. She loves sleeping on her cushion on top of a piece of furniture. Uh, you might see her in the background, but this is a good place to dry flowers. And my niece Emily got married in March, and I tried to dry some of her pretty pink roses that she had sitting on the tables. Again, this is a dry room with the furnace in here, and it's usually dark, so it's that's always a good place to dry flowers. I also have some eucalyptus here uh, that looks pretty good. Here I'm cutting out some tack board as a backer for my contact paper and also to cover the holes on the back panel of the clock. I got this pretty contact paper that looks like wood from Amazon and I'll link it down below in the description box if I can find it. I decided to use another one of these fun transfers that one of you guys sent me. I thought it would be really fitting to go with these dried flowers and I have a link down below in the description box of an Etsy shop that carries a lot of these transfers. Here I'm just gluing the flowers in place. Moving on to this wrought iron piece, the first thing I plan to do is take it apart as far as all the separate little swirls and designs. These are welded together and I'm using the saw saw here to cut them apart. And this is the tool that I go for if there's really no other way of you know, getting something apart. Uh, this one always works. It's a bit rough or hard to handle at times, but it definitely does the job. I picked up two of these old doors at the antique mall a while back and it's one of those pretty doors that has the fancy hinges and the antique latch. I'm always attracted to them and I thought it would look pretty arranging these wrought iron pieces onto the panel of the door. I know the door is really dusty right now but I definitely clean it up a bit and it looks like I have some paint to sand off. But I'm going to see if I can arrange the pieces on here that they look right. I think this would make a nice piece to hang on the wall or just even set against the wall somewhere. It's large enough that you might not even have to hang it up. But I always like to see the wrought iron and the wood together. As I'm sanding these paint spots, I of course am sanding down to the bare wood and this will make my door a little spotty. But I think I'll be able to touch it up with stain, hopefully, because I really don't want to sand the whole door. I'm going to go ahead and paint these wrought iron pieces and the paint I have on hand is this chalkboard paint. Um, it's just a nice flat or matte black paint. Here I'm just arranging the pieces onto the door, trying to space them evenly, kind of creating a pattern of sorts. And as you can see, a few of my curled pieces actually broke off when I cut this apart just from the vibration. And those pieces I'll probably just end up gluing onto the door using E6000 glue. And I thought about doing this for all of the pieces, but some of them aren't lying like nice and flush to the door. So I don't think that would really hold it in place. And I'll be better off using these, I guess I'll call them like plastic staples of sorts. I got them at Menards. They were in the electrical section. I'll try to flash a picture of them on the screen here. And they seem to work quite well to hold these pieces in place. I'm also planning on painting the hardware. I think it'll look better. A cardboard box often comes in handy to stick little screws in if you want to paint the screw heads.
So the last item I'm going to work on in this video is this little plant stand. And initially when I saw it, I thought I'd just put a top in here since it probably broke out. I don't know, was it glass at one point? But I thought I'd put a pretty wood in here. Wouldn't even really have to paint it. Then I turned it around to get my measurements for my top. And I started seeing something else with it. I imagined it would make such a cute little plant house or a terrarium. So I actually ended up ordering glass for the sides. I just got some glass cut to fit into these sides here at Walnut Creek Glass, in case you're local here. And I'm pretty sure I can use picture frames for my roof here. I still need to run to Dollar General probably to look for some frames, but for now I'm gonna put the glass in, probably putting little wood strips or something behind the glass to you know hold it in place. This will make sense as I zoom in here. I know it's kind of crazy. It definitely would make a cute plant stand too, but I just thought with this character along the bottom here, I envisioned these little green plants in here. I thought it would be so cute. So let's see what we can do. Once again, I was so impressed with Walnut Creek Glass. I was able to order these in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon. And I only paid around $7 per piece. I found some old frames and storage that weren't in use. And here I'm just removing those little screw things from the back. And I plan to use these to hold my glass in place. I didn't get a video of this, but I cut these pieces of wood to also help hold the glass in place. I did manage to find some frames at Dollar General, took the insides out, and here I'm painting them. I kind of debated to just leave this, but the one side of this little stand did not have the bottom bar on it. So here I decided to just make one. I know it will complete the project if I make it look the same as the other three sides. Uh, so just cut a piece of wood, pinning it into place, and then painting it white. I cut this piece of plywood to fit into the bottom. Here I'm staining it using an aged oak gel stain. Often when I'm filming fun projects like this, I get a bit carried away and I don't always get videos of everything. I feel like I don't have clear videos of every little thing that I did here. So I'll bring it in close and kind of show you the inside before I put the roof on. Hopefully my camera will focus here. It's sometimes hard on white things like this, but as you can see, I use these little picture frame parts that I took off of the old frames. And these actually swing around like all the way around. I can actually you know, put them up if I decide to remove the glass, maybe to clean it. Uh, it won't be hard to remove it. And for the bottom part, I used little pieces of wood. I uh, tried to use nails to fasten, but it was kind of hard to get them in there without bending them, as you can see, but I think they're fastened enough that it'll hold it in place. Moving on over to the roof part, of course these frames from Dollar General just screwed them together. Um, I used these little parts. They came in a picture hanging kit like this. As you can see, random little parts. And here's the part that I used. I just clipped it off around here, and then I bent this part open further, making it look like this. And these seem to work well to hold the roof in place. It's definitely not something 
something I want to just bump against all the time. But again, I think something like this will be displayed in areas where uh, it'll just be stand sitting there with plants in it and not in use or anything. Um, so it definitely should stay in place. Like it uh, seems solid enough to, you know, for what it is. So let's take a look at some before and after pictures of all of these projects. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure had a lot of fun working on these projects. Pretty sure this little house is gonna stay right here. I think it looks so good in here. Hopefully I gave you guys some ideas to maybe turn some sad looking items into something beautiful again. It's definitely so much fun and anyone can do it. I do wanna mention before ending here, we always try to restock our soap in the middle of the month. So that is going on right now. We have a few new scents available and uh, we've been busy making soap. My cousin Susie is helping me. She does an amazing job with it. All of the soap is made using natural ingredients and then we use some clean fragrance oils for some of the scents and I always try to specify that in the listing in case you're looking for some that are completely natural using essential oils. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. Uh, for myself, I could never go back to store-bought soap. I absolutely love it. It's all we use. As always, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.